Hi scholars, let's look at Teague 4.2G. This says I can relate decimals to fractions that name tenths and hundreds. So we are going to focus on fractions that only have ten or a hundred pieces. I know in other videos I've talked about one-third, one-fourth, one-fifth, and all of that, but for this, because decimals have a tenths and hundreds place, we're only going to focus on fractions that are, you know, like one out of ten and one out of a hundred. So let's get started. Let's talk about the first place value that's right after the decimal. This is known as the tenths place. The one right before it is called the ones place. So before learning decimals, you were probably, you probably remember the ones, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. So let's just change that to 1,000 so it's not weird looking. <laughs> so you have 1,000. So when you think about decimals and you call that like one, think of it like one dollar. Every number, every whole number has like an invisible decimal on the right. So we're used to just, whoops, sorry. We're used to looking at one like this but there's always this hidden decimal right after it because one hole is like one dollar or um, one pound, you know, it or it might be 1.1 pound, but, you know, it might be also one pound. So the, the first place value after the decimal is the tenths place. So the reason why it's called the tenths is because there's no such thing as the ones place. Um, you have tenths, and so it's, it looks like this. It has 10 place values. Think of dimes. 10 dimes equal a dollar. So imagine if I had nine dimes. If I had nine dimes, that's like having 90 cents. Okay? So nine dimes, 10 cents each, it's like uh, t 10 cents a dime. If I have nine dimes, I have 90 cents. So when I reach 99 cents, I'm basically very close to getting one dollar. Okay, so just wanted to kind of briefly introduce that to for familiarity. So let's go back to just tenths. Let's just talk about tenths. If I have one-tenth like this, this is the picture because I have one shaded out of ten. I have one dime out of ten dimes. Once I hit ten dimes, I have one dollar. Think of each one of these pictures as a dollar. So one tenth is one shaded in. Now, as far as the fraction is concerned, when you when I say this, when I say one tenth, you you would also think of a fraction written like this, one tenth. So this and this are actually this is the fraction and this is the decimal. So one tenth or one tenth. And then this would be the picture. Now, I do need to warn you that you need to be careful because a lot of people make mistakes that um, they might sometimes say one one hundredth, which we'll talk about later, like what hundredths are. But you need to pay attention as to how many are in the picture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When there's ten, your fraction will have ten as the denominator. And your number, your the one or the two or the three or whatever it is, it's going to be in the tenths place. Be very careful about that. So let's look at another example. So right here, I have ten pieces and two are shaded in. So this is two tenths. And the reason why it's tenths is because there are ten pieces and there are two shaded in. So when I hear two tenths, I think of the tenths place value in decimals, and I'm going to have 
2 in that spot. So this is 2 tenths, 2 tenths, 2 tenths. Let's look at another example. How about this one? So 10 pieces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 out of 10 shaded in. This is 7 tenths, so then it would be this. Okay, so since I've gone over tenths, it's pretty easy. So I'm just going to go through the entire stack of the tenths decimal cards that I have so you can just see how they work. So there are 10 pieces, so this will be in the tenths place. There will be a 10 as my denominator. 1 out of 10 is shaded in. 1 tenth, 1 tenth, 1 tenth. This next one, 2 are shaded in. So it'll be 2 out of 10. So 2 tenths, 2 tenths, 2 tenths. Over here, 3 out of 10 are shaded in, so 3 tenths, 3 tenths, 3 tenths. 4 are shaded in out of 10, 4 tenths, 4 tenths, 4 tenths. 5 shaded in. 5 tenths, 5 tenths, 5 tenths. Oh dear. Okay, so you're getting the idea. So then this would be 6 tenths. I'm just going to go ahead and erase that. That's hard to keep up with. 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths, 10 tenths. Well, I don't have 10 tenths. But um, one thing I do want to stress is that um, you're dependent on the pictures to help you. You need to be aware on how to do this without pictures. So if I gave you 6 tenths, okay, since we, I've been talking about it so much, you, you know how to write it, but obviously after some time, it... It, the the picture, the image of the picture will go away. So the first step is always look, okay, this is in tenths. So when I look at a place value chart for decimals, this is the tenths and this is the hundredths, six tenths. My six needs to be in the tenths place. So make sure you always look at the denominator. Whenever there's a question about converting fractions to decimals, decimals to fractions, always look at the denominator or look at the place value. So let's look at it look at it from a different point of view. Suppose I gave you 8 tenths. You know that's in the tenths place, so you know to write 8 tenths like that. If it was in another place value, your fraction would look completely different. Okay? So now let's move on and talk about hundredths. Okay, so now let's talk about the second place value. The second place value is called the hundredths place. And the reason why it's called the hundredths place is because the picture that represents it has 100 pieces. And we always call this the pennies because 100 pennies equal a dollar. So when you have one penny like this, you have one one hundredth of a dollar. So same thing as far as pictures are concerned. You look at how many it's cut into, and however many pieces it's cut into, that's the place value it's going to go in. So if you notice, there's 100 pieces. I have 10 shaded in. So I'm going to represent it like this. Now in the last video clips, there was nothing here. It was just 1 tenth. But because this is 100 pieces, I have to put a zero in the hundredths place and say 10 hundredths. So because I said 10 hundredths, my fraction, if you look at this, you know, you're thinking, okay, there are 10 shaded in out of 100 pieces. So 10 
hundredths, my fraction is going to say ten hundredths. Exactly how you read decimals and you're going to change it into a fraction, that's exactly how you would write it. Exactly how you hear it is how you write it. So let me look at another example. Okay, so in this one, we have 100 pieces. We can tell it's all these little squares. 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 out of 100. So this is how I would write my fraction. And then if I'm saying 25 hundredths, I need to make sure I end up in the hundredths place and say this and then... Okay, just like that. Now, sometimes you can think of it as two dimes and five pennies because you do have two that are tens, two tens, so you can think of it like two dimes and then five pennies. But, you know, it, do remember that it's cut up into 100 pieces, so this still has to be 100 as your denominator. Okay, let's look at this one. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85 out of 100. So 85 hundredths. It has to finish in the hundredths place because there are 100 pieces. And then my fraction, exactly how I read this decimal, is exactly how I'd write my fraction. 85 hundredths. Let's look at one more. This one is really important because a lot of students um, write the decimal wrong. So if you notice, there's a hundred pieces. One, two, three, four, five are shaded in. Just five, not fifty. So this is what my fraction would look like. Five hundredths. Now, if I said five hundredths, the five needs to be in the hundredths place. So this is what my decimal would look like. But a lot of scholars will do this. A lot of students will do this. And that actually says 5 tenths. And you know what? This is what 5 tenths looks like. And that's not what this picture shows. This picture is just showing 5, which, you know what? It's like 5 pennies out of 100 pennies. This is five dimes, which is 50 cents. 50 cents is half a dollar. That's why half of it is shaded. So we need to make sure we are aware of our decimal matching up our picture and our fraction. So really be careful when you get these. Or sometimes, you know, you know you're going to be asked to identify the fraction without a picture. And so they might say, like this. Well, I'll always have students that will write this. Or they might write this. Because they're like, but it's in the hundreds place. And I'm like, right, but it's nine that's in the hundreds place. The decimal for this, if you're saying hundreds, it's, it's going to finish in the hundreds place, but it's going to look like this. The decimal for this is going to finish in the tenths place, and it's going to look like this. The decimal for this one is actually this. So I want you to be really careful and aware of the picture and how to change the decimal to fraction and fraction to decimal. So this is a, I hope this is a good understanding of decimals to fractions and fractions to decimals. Now, in the next video, I'm going to put up um, a picture, and you're going to write the fraction and decimal. We'll do a few of those, and then I will be giving you the decimal, and you write the fraction, or I'll give you the fraction, and you write the decimal, and there won't be pictures involved. So let's get started.